Well, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, it's my real pleasure to join Climate Science and Investment Conference 2021, organized by Columbia Business School and Columbia Climate School. As I trust everybody in this conference agrees, 2021 is a critical year to set our course either to solve climate crisis or fail, although the failure is not an option. So we need to bring together all available resources and intelligence, innovations, and most importantly, our will to take action to address climate change in time. So I just want to share with you the, the, my perspective from my uh, three roles uh, over the last several years I took. The first, I just started as a UN Special Envoy of the uh, uh, Secretary General on Innovative Finance and Sustainable Investment. And then I was the Chief Investment Officer of Japanese Government Pension Fund, which is the, the largest pension fund in the world until March last year. So I wanted to share with you my perspective from the other uh, asset owners uh, viewpoint. And uh, also uh, between GPIF and the UN Special Envoy, I worked as a special policy advisor to Japanese government uh, on the green innovation and the finance agenda. And also I was ambassador of the TCFD summit. So uh, I wanted to uh, discuss what the, the each countries uh, and uh, you know, political leaders can do. So uh, those three uh, perspectives I'm hoping to share with you today. So first, UN Secretary General has been very active in encouraging and urging global leaders in both private and public sectors. So UN member states agreed to work together to achieve 17 sustainable development goals in 2015. It's very ambitious goals. And this pandemic put additional difficulty and challenges to achieve those goals by 2030. But Secretary General is clearer than ever, we should not give up and actually need to even accelerate our actions to achieve those goals. Among those goals, goal 13 is a climate action. So to take urgent action to combat climate change, if we fail to act immediately, climate change will cause a lot of more additional uh, challenges and the damage to achieve other goals. So education for everybody, gender equity and so on. So climate uh, crisis is something we need to address because it has overarching effect uh, over the other sustainable development goals which the uh, member state agreed to achieve. So UN has been involved in sort of like working together with global leadership. And uh, this year, we had a very good start with the uh, Biden's climate summit in the US where the older global uh, political leader attended including Japanese Prime Minister Suga. And uh, US made a very aggressive and ambitious commitment uh, to cut the, uh, the carbon footprint by 50 to 52% by 2030. Japan committed to do that 46% uh, 40, cut by 2030. And uh, some other countries kind of showed the, uh, the similar will uh, to revise their NDCs. And uh, this year we have full of events uh, after you know, following this the climate summit. Uh, G7, G20, and then T, uh, the Glasgow COP26. And that we really need to see real action and a real commitment uh, by global political leaders uh, across those events. And the UN is willing to uh, work with them, uh, continue to push the, uh, the agenda further as we really don't have time to waste. But as I repeat that the, this year is gonna be critical and uh, given the uh, change in the US uh, political leadership, now all the major political and economic power agree to work on a climate agenda. So this year is the year for us to really uh, set our course uh, to solve this problem. Uh, so the, uh, the next uh, you know, perspective I would like to share is I was deeply involved with the Japanese political leaders uh, throughout their preparation and a discussion to uh, commit to uh, 2050 carbon neutral. And uh, there is some um, skepticism that the, uh, you know, the making such a commitment in a long distant future is not gonna create the, uh, make an impact on the way that private businesses operate their businesses. But what happened right after the uh, Prime Minister Suga's announcement every single day some carbon neutral uh you know the enabling technologies or new products and also the other uh, commitment by japanese the other uh, private you know the uh, private businesses 
are actually uh, flooding uh, Japanese newspapers. So the other, uh, which is very, very important and probably the most important thing for the uh, political leader to do is set the goal and make the ultimate commitment will really change the other uh, course of the actions by the private sector. And also they need to make sure that the, uh, the, the, rule, of the rule of the game is set not to waste the time because if the other uh, rule of the game is not clear private sector, well, they will sort out sometime, uh, someday, because the market force usually, you know, the um, uh, push the uh, the market and the business in the right direction over time. But given the urgency of the climate crisis, we really don't have a time to waste. So we need the government to intervene to set the rule of the game, including carbon pricing. And also the, uh, we need a lot of like, uh, you know, the uh, discussions going on about the, uh, the disclosure, which I'm gonna touch upon when I, I share uh, my perspective from the, uh, the big asset owners uh, viewpoint. Uh, but the uh, GPF, when they ask for the, uh, ask their asset manager and a portfolio company to analyze their climate risk, and also the, uh, the advocated for the uh, integration of ESG in the portfolio management. The biggest pushback we received was the lack of standardized, standardized disclosure matrix or performance matrix. And I feel sorry now I serve on the uh, several corporate boards, including uh, Tesla. Uh, you know, the, their CFO and the treasurer has received sometimes like a 2,000, 3,000 questionnaires from the other uh, analysts or investors asking about the dis information, uh, disclosure on the climate and other like ESG. Uh, risk factors. So I think the, uh, the it's fair, uh, you know, the uh, request from the, uh, the corporate sector that the, uh, the investor work with the regulators uh, to come up with a standard uh, disclosure matrix. And I have been advocating that the TCFD, which was started by the, uh, the G7 FSA uh, Financial Stability Board, and where the, my peer uh, special envoy, uh, Mark Carney, took a leadership, uh, together with uh, Michael Bloomberg, uh, the TCFD probably give the, the, has the best chance to be uh, the core uh, disclosure framework. And I always wanted to uh, you know, the invite all the big investors and also smaller investors to ask their portfolio manager to, first of all, disclose the, uh, the climate related risk in their portfolio and ask them how they think they can reduce that, the, uh, the risk associated with the climate change. So analyzing the, uh, the risk is the first step. And the two, when, once they start it, they will be frustrated. There's no standardized matrix. And uh, so there's, there's no standardized the, uh, the disclosure. So uh, that's the area uh, the, the regulator can step in together with the other uh, working together with the other uh, big, uh, the, uh, the asset owners and asset managers, because it, we, again, we really don't have to uh, count on the market forces to actually, uh, you know, the uh, come up with the other uh, solution. Uh, in the history of the uh, finance and in the history of asset management, usually market force uh, was very effective to come up with that kind of a standard. But at this time, we need the other uh, policy and regulated intervention to speed up the integration uh, as we don't have a time to waste. So the last three, uh, from the, uh, the investor's perspective, uh, I think the five years ago, it was hard to uh, have a consensus uh, to start the discussion on the other uh, climate risk and opportunities. But now I think the, uh, the a lot of all, all the other uh, professional, uh, uh, professional and the financial institutions agree that the uh, climate risk should be integrated into their analysis and decision making. And again, you know, they are struggled with the, uh, the how they can do it. So they have agreed they would do it, but they haven't agreed how to do it. So, uh, you know, the uh, agreeing on the matrix and also the other uh, collaboration between different initiatives started by different the, uh, the uh, investors should be, you know, they should work together towards the other uh, consolidation as it is very critical. And uh, as we see the uh, the the more and more government commit to the other uh, net, uh, net zero 2050, uh, transition will be critical. So uh, on one hand, the, the, we see the, uh, the rise of the, uh, the uh, green bond and the climate the sustainability bond, but at the same time, it's sometimes create the, uh, the sort of like also like a sometimes encourage the greenwashing because 
uh, it's not combined with the uh, the, uh, the quality of uh, long-term strategic, uh, you know, the other uh, planning by that the issuer. So uh, now is what happens is like, uh, you know, the, even the issuer has no uh, comprehensive plan to achieve net zero or reduce the carbon footprint. If one particular project is meant to be a green project, they can still issue green bond. So uh, it's probably needed to uh, to make that the uh, the issuer to actually commit to the uh, their, uh, with their uh, trajectory. And at the same time, we need to finance a transition because it's not uh, practical for us to assume everything becomes green tomorrow. So uh, we need to finance transition, but transition has to be credible. So the all those kind of things should be discussed. Uh, among the uh, regulator, policymakers, and investors, and also we should invite the uh, corporate to set that, uh, you know, set the standard. So uh, to complete uh, conclude my uh, remark, I think the everybody uh, have a role uh, to push this agenda forward, and uh, scientific analysis is welcome. And also innovation is necessary, but don't count on the innovation to solve everything because there's a lot of things we can do without the further innovation uh, to uh, speed up the other uh, transition to net zero. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share my uh, perspective with you. And uh, I really uh, glad to hear the school like uh, Columbia is, is taking a leadership because it's very, very important for to bring in the uh, the academics and the researchers because we need a scientific evidence on what we are doing and at the same time as you can reach to the younger audience and that those people really uh, have a strong power to push the uh, the uh, political leaders and uh, the uh, the private sectors as you are future generation uh, to vote as well as the, you are the, the future customer and uh, of the uh, those services and the products we see the private. Uh, businesses are making. So thank you very much for listening and uh, all the best for the successful event. Thank you very much.